All right, so the, the problem with the pool first opening is this is going to give us a bit more varied results. So I might try and get us away from it, but I kind of just want to see how it gets followed up. And um, yeah, like six linear aggression can be really good. So options. Stop doing pool first, six ling, maybe just two lings, right? So it's more of a standard macro build that just stops the reapers growing with us. That's right, you know, that's, that's an option. Or just hatch first for mega macro mode, right? So... Why would we do that, guys? The reason we would do that is just to try and get a more consistent start. Whereas at the moment, we're probably going to have a lot of games we do a lot of damage. Or we do no damage at all. They defend it well with the Reaper at home, micro their SCV. We're a little behind, so it's kind of like... Hmm. Thank you, guys. I used to play most games between 1800 and 30, 20, 30, 2300. I used to play 3200. Been trying to get it lower. Yeah. A lot of people use way higher, way higher. So don't think you guys are freaks. As much as I, I make fun of it, and I'm like, you're going to get hand injuries. Oh my God, this is huge. This is absolutely huge. I mean, this just does so much damage because Bullia didn't SCV scout, right? Ouch. All right, just um, run your lings to the corner of the map or something like that. Don't kill the command center. Okay. Just because this has obviously done way too much damage. Um, and just focus on your macro. <laughs> I'm just like, this is too much damage. Stop. <laughs> so he's got a pretty well-timed third. Um, pulled two off gas. Uh, the creep tumor is really late on the natural. So why is this queen up here? Is he going to spread creep in his main this early? Don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it, mate. Let's, let's write that down. Need more creep earlier. They nest way too early. There's just no reason to ever build a bane. Yeah, this is what I was expecting, guys. Is he's too focused on lings and banes. He's he's not even building extra queens or drones right now. So he's got nine lava right now. So that's a huge issue. A huge issue. And the overlords. He's he's actually missing an overlord out here. He's very lucky he has a zergling there, because he yeah. And where, where are his queens? Why are his queens not all out front? So anyways, I can't I can't see control groups on this overlay. But I don't see the queens all getting selected at once. Oh, there we go. No, no, no. They are. They are. They're on a control group. He's stabbing to them. Queen okay. Newly birthed queen. But yeah, he's way behind the macro right now. He just built three drones. Should be building like four overlords and stuff. And he's staring at the Hellions. There was no need to look at those Hellions. That was a situation where you A move on the minimap. A move on minimap to deal with Hellions. Bane nest way too early. Queens and Lings for defense. Let's skip Bane nest completely. Every game. <clears throat> yeah. So notice here, he knows there's a lib, he still hasn't put a spore down. Oh, and he just pulled his queens away. Oh no. Swarm forces under attack. Because <laughs> like I said, Bully, I was like, Bully, I don't care about your, your macro. Just be, you know, so he can actually Swarm play to kill Joy's level a bit more with the attack. micro, maybe even beyond his level. Because I've said we don't care about the next step. We just want the early stage to be really good. 
that's a very weird common 70 games. Thank you for the Prime Gaming sub, though. That's it's, uh, it's uh, this is uh, the whole breed me thing. It's such a weird internet speak, my friend. Ugh. It's, I, you know, it's, it's like when someone goes to shake your hand and they 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 extend their finger and then they they do this. And you're just like, ah, oh, why'd you do that, dude? And they just like give you that seedy grin. Queen birth successful. Enemy. Still no spore crawler? Drones. What is this Omega Greed, my friend? Um, yeah, it is. The moment you see a liberator, you build a spore in every base. Everything else you did was good with the reaction, but you also build a spore in each base. Because that guy, you know, they can rotate as well. So, you know, we got away with it this time, but. Greedy. So what, what do you do guys? Pull drones. Build spore in each base. Build spore in each base. Move queens around to respond. Plus intercept rotation. Right? So if, if you're like coming up with your queens here, you also should grab your queen from the natural and move it over here. Because you can anticipate the liberator there unseaging and rotating into your natural, right? And that's why we build a spore in each mineral line as well, to, to actually be safe against that. And now we're droning to over 80 workers. What the fuck are we droning to 80, over 80 workers? So this is crazy. We have no army right now. Insanity. So way too, yeah, way too safe early and then way too greedy afterwards. Ah, very common. Very common. Okay, I see what's happening here. So we need more queens, lings, and drones early, and we need to benchmark the third. Benchmark Swarm how quickly we saturate our third minerals. Aim for five minute latest. That's going to be our goal. That's going to be the main thing that should fix out our Zerg vs. Terran. Um, Queen birth successful. Move the queens to respond. Has he actually rallied Zerglings up there though? Because he knew this was coming and didn't move any Zerglings to respond at all. So that's really sloppy. Alright, don't leave the game. Um, those Zerglings that you just sent into your main, did you split those mm -hmm. off your control group? Do you use control no, groups? No, I, I used... I, they were already hotkeyed to my first hotkey group, and I, what I did is I basically moved all my Zerg, or attack moved all my zerglings back there, and then I just went back to pull a bunch of zerglings off of that hotkey to my second hotkey so that I could yeah. uh, continue the attack. Um, it was panic. I'm playing not so great because I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I apologize. No, no worries, mate. Don't don't ever. Um, we, we always play like shit. It's dark Sarah would vomit looking at any of our games on any day. Don't worry. <laughs> um, you'd be like, oh, Jesus, peasants. Um, so the point there is you saw the drop coming. You moved the queens, but you didn't immediately move Zerglings until he actually started unloading, mm -hmm. right? And then you went, oh, mm -hmm. shit. So that to me is like always Mutation prepare ahead of time. Complete. So whether that meant... Because you spotted it early enough, you could have been like, oh, on my next, I could build more Zerglings and then just control group them on my drop defense key straight away. So looking at your control groups, I can't see it right now because I got the wrong overlay on. Okay. But um, your control groups, so what's your drop defense group? What would you use for that normally? I would normally pull that onto five, I think, um, if I saw them coming as early as I did and I wasn't uh, panicking. <laughs> So, uh, so my queens are on four, and uh, my first overlord is on five, and normally what I'll do is I'll, uh, for any sort of like run by or drop defense, I'll pull my drop defense or run by onto uh, my uh, hockey five. Okay, so one, two, three is all army, is it? 
Four one, attack. two is har army, three is uh, hatcheries, four is queens, five is uh, drop defense. I... So you said four is queens. Is that every queen or do you separate your <laughs> Yeah, that's that that's the other thing is, um, as I'm sure you can see, when I start to fall apart, I pull every queen from every every hatchery um, because they're all on the same hotkey because that's how I inject. And what I want, what I want to do and what I want to work on um, is actually having a separate hockey group for just queens that are injecting and one for creek queens we've but absolutely at the moment, got to I'm do not that. at that yeah yeah, yeah. and that, that's got to be a priority so that's going to change your play in this matchup massively because i could see there was a lot of chaos because of that so five for a defense key do you standard hotkey layout uh yeah so five we're going to call that a run by slash drop defense because like if you're dominating a game you don't need a drop defense squad right so that could be 20 banelings waiting to run into your opponent's third when they're attacking you or something like that right so it's i like mm -hmm. that idea that's how i like to define it. everyone comes up with their own thing that makes sense for them but if we're ever on the defense takes priority that that's the 30 zerglings in my main base or whatever to defend the drops right something like that pack mm -hmm. approach hydra defending the warp prism whatever it is right so do you use any of the hotkeys six plus? I haven't, no. Cool. That means they're free. I mean, if you're using standard hotkeys, you're not using uh, W or Correct. W for anything. I don't. I don't know. I if don't you, think you're not using caps lock or tilde for anything either. If you're using a completely standard hotkey layout, do you know what tilde is? The one to the left of one. Yep. Yep. So um, those are custom hotkeys potentially just waiting. Yeah. Oh, I was just checking. I don't. You're right. I don't use anything for W. I did move um, all my building hotkeys, like all my upgrades. Every single upgrade is on A and S. Um, but that, yeah, that's it. A and S. Oh, just like the the buttons for the upgrades. Yeah, like, like the yeah, 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 themselves. Yep. Yeah. Just so it's a bit more grid friendly. None of this reaching over to P for pathogen grounds <laughs> or whatever the right. stupid default is. Um, good, good, good. Okay, so. I think we should make a custom key right now. So we're gonna have okay. custom key. So we got six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So zero, we can go, um, I don't know, maybe, oh, yeah, creeps. W. Let's make That's... W our creep slash defense queens. What do you think of that? W, okay. So that way we're not messing with any of your existing muscle memory. It's like super just, Mineral let's go into the extended. global control group menu. And basically, we just okay. change all the zeros to Ws. So we go, okay, create control group 10. Should now be control plus. Wrong keyboard. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, control Oops. group 10, 10 should be control plus W? That's right. Oh. Oh, and okay. go through and there should be like five one two three four five different settings because you want to stay change the stealing ones as well. Because you don't use control group stealing at all, or do you, do you use alt, or do you... I do use alt. So um, when I want to pull off like a group of whatever units to do a run by or anything, I will just alt and then put them on whatever hierarchy I want to use them to run by, and then that's it. If you're used to doing that, we'll keep it that way. That makes sense. Um, that's, that's a good way of doing it. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, so we should be okay. So it should be Control plus W. Then select Control Group Ten should be W. Oh, add the shift control plus W. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be slow today. I apologize. There's there's five different zeros you have to change. So you got to go down through each of the settings in that Control Group menu and just basically it's the last one of each little subgroup, right? Where it's like select you Control Group Ten, to add to Control Group Ten, create Control Group Ten, create Control Group and take away. So there should be five different fields where you have to go and change it and you just put whatever is already in there and obviously whenever you're changing hotkeys for anyone out there doing this at home as well okay it's very easy to accidentally left click in the box after you first left click to select it and um mineral cluster that obviously extended. unbinds your ability to click on things so don't do that guys <laughs> oh that unbound my overseer oversight ability okay so i just have to refine that to yeah no one gives a shit that's fine <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe you have the muscle memory for using. It. I guess I, I mean, we use it sometimes with like lurkers, right, and stuff. But it's not not too common. Yeah, not not too common. I also um, I mean, this is embarrassing to admit, but I will also use it because sometimes I'll move and I don't want my overseers to, to die. So I'll put them in overseer mode. 
Mineral field exhausted. All right, I think I got that also. Awesome. Someone in chat was asking if they'd be okay using a Razer Tartarus gamepad. Their laptop keyboard feels off. Yeah, anything beats a laptop keyboard, guys. Laptop keyboards are pretty terrible, usually. Like, I have a mechanical keyboard on a laptop. It's still shit. Um, <laughs> it's, like, cool compared to most laptop keyboards, but it's just the keys always are pretty bad. So, yeah, yeah if you guys can avoid it, then, then definitely do so. Laptops are hard to use. It's hard to hit my F1 keys, which are all my uh, camera hotkeys. Are you using laptop? Yeah, I don't have a desktop right now. <laughs> oh, he's using a laptop Mineral keyboard as well? Expended. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. That, that's definitely one. You could hit up that like uh, that, <laughs> uh, discount bin or whatever. Get someone's like Facebook Marketplace. Get someone's like $5, you know, QSEN or whatever Vespine keyboard. I don't know. But um, just because I find laptop keys, some aren't as bad as others, but it's very easy to like slip across to lose where you are on the keyboard. And, and definitely yeah, reaching up to the F keys on some of them can be a bit awkward and stuff, but might be worth. Um, also, having a monitor to plug your laptop into can be nice, but you know, obviously depends. It's hard to see the minimap on laptops. A lot of people do get pretty high level on laptops, though, so Mineral don't worry about it. Exhausted. Um, That's good. That's reassuring. Anyways, true. so. We've got a, a creep queen hotkey. Do we need a hotkey for anything else? Um, you've only got two army groups. Why don't we just create another one while we're here? So like hop, hop okay. in the menu if you've left it. Why don't we make control nine tilde instead? So go through all the nines and change those to tildes just so to we have tilde? a hotkey okay. available. Yeah, we can do it with caps lock as well as an option, but some people find that weird. So I think we'll just do tilde for now. So we just like, all right, this is going to get difficult to use. <laughs> get used to, I should say. Yeah, I mean, that one, we're not going to be as priority. We just do one at a time. But it's um, it's right next to one. So it's like it's the most accessible key that we're not, you know, using and stuff, right? So just change all the nines to tildes and do, do, do. And that should be cool. Yeah, it's a really nice control group, Tilda, just up there. Um, caps Lock, W, if we're using standard. Some other ones we, we definitely can create as well. But, um, yeah. Mineral field depleted. Sweet. All right, got that too. Okay, so that's, that's really helpful because once that's done, you can, um, like right now, even in this game, you can go, go grab your queens that we want as your injecting queens because... You know, I always say only have three injecting queens, Mineral right? Cluster. So we can leave those on number three four. Three injecting? Yeah. Mineral field so, depleted. Okay. Because you need them for defense. So the idea here is the way you want to think about this is obviously when you're playing Ling Bane, you need a shitload of lava, right? So yeah. three injecting queens, if you're hitting your injects, is more than you'll ever need for any other unit comp, right? Because as you're expanding, you get plenty of production anyway off hatcheries, right? They still produce. As long as mm -hmm. you're hitting those injects, it's all good. So in terms of... um. Let me write this down. Control groups down there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So in terms of injecting, injecting just three queens, three bases. H how do you jump between? Let me see. I know you wrote this down. I've already forgotten. Um, Sorry, terrible memory. Are you using camera locations or? I use, when I'm injecting, I'll use space bar. Um, when I am dealing with harassment, I will use the camera location designated to that Mineral base. Field exhausted. So that's or one of those things that definitely Geyser helps it be depleted. a bit more, like if you're only using three, camera locations is like kind of better. Um, camera locations will make it more consistent, but it, obviously that's a bit getting used to. So up to you to work on at some point if you want to go down that track. But until then, exhausted. the idea is your extra queens will gather extra energy, right? And they can dump that onto mm -hmm. the macro hatch and fourth, fifth bases when there is a lull in the pressure. So when that happens, a bit flexible based on the matchup. But assuming all your queens haven't died, there's usually a point around six minutes, six minutes, 30, where you're like, oh, like I've defended the Hellbat attack or the Hellions and the Banshee or the Hellions and the Lib, right? Mm -hmm. These four queens that I have on defense duty have 100 energy each. So what's 100 times four? That's like, four, because 100 energy is four injects, right? So that's 16 right. injects just sitting there. 
Oh, and you're like, oh, cool. Yeah. My fourth and fifth base, my macro hatch is finished. And you just hold down shift. And you're like, all right, inject a few times on my macro hatch, a few times on my fourth, a bunch of times on my fifth. And those queens just go. And they're basically just doing a dump of energy as a one-off. Because um, you've already got enough creep tumors out, right? You don't need th thousands of creep tumors. You only need one creep tumor on each lane, two if you really want. There's no need to have more, right? The queens are just there to replace tumors as they die, right? It's more about mm -hmm. regularly spreading tumors than anything else. So that way you've got a system where it's like, okay, those hatcheries are automatically going to just produce lava for the rest of the game. And this is actually like a, a very kind of conscious thing we want to do, right? So we want to be like, okay, so often you save energy with those queens after just maybe three at most four creep tumors no, early because you need transfuse to defend depleted. battle cruisers or hellbats or whatever surprise attacks Terran can do. And then exhausted. once you defend that, you're like, oh, we've got lots of energy. It's like, maybe you put a few more tumors down if you need them, but more importantly, it's like, just turn those hatcheries into non-stop lava fountains and your uh, your macro kind of takes care of itself from there. You just need to do the the same three hatchery inject, which is this like <laughs> super automated subconscious cycle where it's like, Mineral field it's exhausted. the same every game, right? You get your third up injecting usually Mineral by about 3.30, no later than four minutes most games, right? So mm -hmm. from that point, you're injecting three hatcheries right to the very end of the game. Obviously later on, Vespine lots of fights going on. Depleted. You might not do it very regularly. You might just go Vespine back and queue up like five exhausted. injects on each hatchery once in a while. But it's kind of nice to have that as a system so that it actually is a bit more automatic. So I think that'll be really nice. Um, on the most basic level, you have those queens on W now. So mm -hmm. um, you're still in this game, right? Yes, I am. So wh where are your, your defense queens? And have you put them on W yet? Oh. Uh, oh, God. I have it on. I didn't. Okay, I'm dumb. I'm in the replay. I'm not actually in the game. Oh, so you rewound. You, you didn't continue the game. No worries. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. Fine. That's fine. It's all good. So anyway, so in this next game we get into, you're going to have to hotkey those front queens on, uh, on, on W. So whenever you take a queen, if it was on your injecting key before that, you're going to have to go Alt W, right? Or Alt Shift W. If it's okay. not already on a key, which this is why in the early game and in general, you don't need an injecting key early on at all because... There's just no purpose to it because your queens are constantly like, inject. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go become a creep defense queen now. And the next queen that pops out will take over my duty. So you can right. see how it, it becomes a bit more seamless with how your queens are joining the front rather than, oh, pull every queen to the front. Oh, let's go back and inject. Oh, pull every <laughs> it's it's <laughs> you do an inject when you pop out and you become a defense queen. And the next okay. one will do an inject and go become a defense queen. And the next one will pop out and maybe she stays as an injecting queen. That's kind of like the rhythm that goes on a little bit, right? So okay. this is going to be a big change for you, but it's so important to be able to use those queens independently. Also, if like libs or air units come in, it allows us to like separate our queens and focus on multiple things at once a lot more smoothly. So that's going to be huge. The other thing is you're not allowed to build a baneling nest anymore. This is a rule that is going to make you a thousand times better in this matchup. Um, you built your Banely Nest at like 3 minutes 50 that game after doing a pool first six Zergling opening. <laughs> okay. So that you're putting yourself behind, but you're that damaging your opponent as well. Your Banely Nest should never be going down before 4.30. And instead I've said, fuck it, you, you're building your Banely Nest after your lair starts, just so you can get Banely speed on time. It's because we need you to drone your third. Your third droned very slow. You got supply blocked. You got way too distracted. Mm -hmm a few times so by doing this it's like let's not worry about banes let's build spores on time as well do you have a set yeah, spore time 4 to 30 is when i would normally put down spores and you could probably push that to 445 is something we could do as a standard spore timing okay um, when should i be taking my lair <laughs> uh later uh <laughs> so <laughs> we we need to saturate three bases essentially so like let, let, if you look at the notes um let's okay. order of priority okay uh, do you see where i'm writing that yes yep drone 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 and what do we need to do so if we scroll down a little bit i've said look um where did i write this Benchmark how quickly. You see where I turned it bold? Just in the game one verse bullion notes. That's going to be the most important thing. Okay. 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 So 
the, the big changes are we need to saturate our third. So we need to drone, drone, drone. And then once we are getting oversaturated on our bases with just queens and links to defend, right? And spores, mm -hmm. right? So queens, links, spores, defend said drones, defend drones. What's the next thing that happens? Now it's up to you what order you prefer, but essentially, so let's write down everything. Uh, I'm gonna write down everything and then you can, you can reshuffle it. So macro hatch, fourth base and fifth base can all go down, right? Three different hatcheries. Or if you like to just do two hatcheries, maybe it's just a fourth base and a macro hatch. How do you think of it? Do you think of it as just macro hatch and fourth base? What, what do you think? Yeah, I would normally just do a macro hatch and a fourth base. Okay, so we've got um, macro hatch, fourth base. We've got evos, bane nest plus lair. I'm going to put those all as one chunk. So we're going to think of those as all as one thing that goes down at once. So it's okay, all batched gotcha. up, okay? And we need five gases as well. So five, what, okay, okay. Because we need to go up to six gas, right? Because you're yeah, gonna go no, mutas okay. and you need the upgrades and everything, and you've only been mining off one gas. Um, by the way, when did you put back on gas normally with your first gas geyser? It was really late. I want to say it was like three. But what's 40, what's your what's your, that, that's fine. I, normally it's about want, three. Yeah. I want to normally do it around like three fifteen or three thirty. I think three thirty is, is totally fine. So three fifteen is probably a little too early. Three three because you've are, you're also leaving a worker on gas. Is what you did in that game. So three thirty yeah. is totally fine for you. Okay, three thirty. Okay. Yeah. So you also need the five gas. So what order do you want to do those in? And this is purely whatever you prefer. Um, do I want to get all my production and hatcheries going just to make sure I get that big, you know, mineral dump and the production, then go for the tech and then the gases? Is it the gases, the tech, then the hatcheries? It's just whatever makes sense to you. There's no right answer. It's just whatever you think. Kind of, I want to do it that way. And then we do it that way every game because we want consistency. So it becomes like a real set piece that we get really comfortable with and really good at executing under pressure. Um, I think I would say I'm a big fan of fast upgrades. So I would, prefer, I guess I would like to tech first before I go for the macro hatch and fourth base. Um, so what I would assume I would do the five gases first and then Evo Nest, Bane Nest, Lair, and then the Macro Hatch in fourth base. Okay, let's do it that way. That's totally fine. All right, what's the marker for when we're going to start doing all of that? Is there any way to think of what's going to kick all, all of those off? Um, if I had to guess, I would say probably once my third's fully saturated. Okay, so at third base, full saturation. And obviously we could go oversaturated there, right? Because you're about to yeah. build a ton of buildings, which is a lot of dead drones, right? Right, yeah. Five gases is five drones, plus how many? 15 are going to mine those five gases. That's 20 drones dead, if you think about it, off minerals. Okay, yeah. Plus two Evos at Bay Nest and Alaire, that's another dead four drones. Macro Hatch, fourth base, another two dead drones. Taken off your minerals. So... If you're doing this build and you have 25, 30 drones on your third and you're like, oh shit, I'm too late. It's not the end of the world. You will chew those drones up, dropping them on the gases, putting them on the gases. Obviously, when you're doing that transition though, that's a pretty hectic transition. I like to mm -hmm. reset my rally points on each hatch. As I, I was that. just going to ask that. <laughs> I was going to ask, I was like, would it be beneficial to place my rally point for each hat a hatch at their own base? <laughs> Yeah, and that'll that'll balance things a little more automatically. And it's nice, because if you think about it, you've got to take two gases on the natural and the third, which is a lot more drones than the main. But the main is usually where you build the evos and the bay nest. So it balances out. So it actually lines up really nicely if you just like, okay, go to my main, reset the rally point, take the gas. Go to my natural, reset the rally point, take two gases. Third base, reset the rally... Well, it's already got the rally point there, take two gases. And that way you've got this like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So this is cool. So, okay, now we've got this whole order, defending with queens and lings. Okay, there's little things like when you see Hellions coming in, I would like you to A, move on the minimap with your queens a little bit more. You stared at them a little bit much in that last game. That's something we could work on down the track. There's a thousand other details like that. Overall, it looked pretty good. But the other thing, if we want a more consistent opening is in future, we may stop doing the six ling pressure with the pool first. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> because it's just, we can go pull first into two Zerglings because it keeps the Reaper at home, you know, but it's not as much of a okay. commitment, right? Or that we can sense. go hatch first and just do a normal hatch first opening. But I'd like to give us those but it's just so we can have a really consistent next stage. Um, so are you down for that? Yeah, yeah. Just doing the two links. Yeah, that's good. So two links or hatch first? Which one do you prefer? They're both oh, totally solid build uh, I'll, I'll, uh, Hatch first is fine. Um, They're both really good. I, I honestly see so. so. Yeah, hatch first is fine. Uh, so it would be 16 hatch. Um, 18 gas, six, 17 18 pool. gas, 17 pool. Okay. Yep. 16 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool. All right. So we're going to now... Let's play another game really quick. Um... We can cut into your next session a little bit, I think, if you're okay to go for a little bit longer, just because yeah, yeah, probably only cut into it about 10 minutes beyond the first session. But um, I think it's worth it right now because obviously we first session is just so much shit to talk about. It's hard to get into the meat and potatoes because <laughs> it's like, how do you do this mechanic? How do you do that mechanic? Oh, you could do right. this, but it's a lot of work if you want to change your mouse, your keyboard. Okay, it's, it's a lot of stuff. I think though, if we can get just a game under our belt now, it's, you're not going to execute well. You're going to execute like total shit. Just ex expect that. It's just okay. about you're trying to develop some muscle memory. Okay, I'm putting my queens on this W key, which I've never used before. We're trying right. to use that. I'm trying I to do have a question about third. that. Yep. Um, so when the queens pop, am I, I'm auto, obviously I'm auto, uh, automatically injecting the second queen at the net. It's still okay to make a creep tumor with that one, or do you want me to inject with that one? And then my other question is um, do I automatically add them to my W? key or do i wait until the next two queens pop so um it only if you've already if you like inject and you've already got another queen building it's gonna pop with only a few seconds like oh, after okay. the inject like because a queen takes like i don't know 37 seconds or something and an inject is 29 seconds i don't know the actual numbers it's like i think it's 36 seconds for a queen so it's it's totally fine if you've already got another queen building you can like inject bring it to the front because you know the next queen's gonna pop out and there'll be little downtime but mm -hmm. if it's the very start when you, you you're like taking your third base and stuff, you don't actually have the money to be building queens nonstop. So right at the start, not necessarily. You'll find like the moment where you're like, oh okay, I've got another queen producing and I've done an inject. Cool, I can add that to the key and bring it to the front. Um, oh, okay. And we should definitely go first energy on natural is creep tumor. Okay. Okay. Um. So that's what I normally do, but I wasn't I wasn't sure. Cool. Good, good, good. All right, awesome. Well, yeah, let's just get into a game and let's say um, very passive play, John Bomb, please. Just really light Hellion folks uh, and maybe one Viking, you know, to clear OVs, etc. So, so we we want to be able to just do our own thing and um and get used to stuff. So we're gonna ask John Bomb to be kind of chill on it. Hopefully, John Bomb's okay to do that. Okay. It says KK, yeah. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, so we're going hatch first now. We're not bothering with Bailing Nest. Any sort of aggression, we're defending because we're going to go eight queens every game, okay? Eight? Okay. Uh, yeah. And you so said three on injects, right? Three on injects, which means five up front. If you ever see a Hellbat okay. timing, Hellbat BC, that's what you can always grab the other queens as well, right? You know, bring everything okay. to the yeah. front kind of thing. But. Um, We've got so many notes in so many different places, so I'm just going to write a lot of info, yeah. at the very top, and I'm going to consolidate them all into of our notes into one. So just get in your groove. I'll, I'll maybe talk you through it a little bit, but for now, 17 hatch, 18 gas, 17 pool. Let's get that macro build going, and uh, I will tune in, chime in every now and then with a reminder, but otherwise, we're just trying to get the build going and just trying to reinforce that muscle memory. Okay. Okay, so summary. What are our most important things, guys? Most important takeaways. Um, and Blue was saying we should mention, oh, is it after gas fully saturated? Uh, obviously only minerals, because we were still only on one gas at that point. So I think it was I think it was clear because we were telling uh Killjoy to we were saying once you hit three base saturation, take all your other gases, take your and then go into your Evo's Bane Nest Lair and then your Extra Hatcheries. Bam, 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 in that order. So the summary, the most important takeaways, guys, is uh, benchmark when we fully saturate our third minerals every game. 
should be no later than five minutes. Okay, so that's one one of our biggest things, guys. Um, get used to defense queens on W. That's going to take a bit. That's that's one of the other biggest things. Uh, hatch first opening. Quite different, right? Just just you know refine that hatch first opening. What else are we going to do, guys? Um. Refine and make sure we stick to consistent order, which is what we wrote down before, right? Which is that order of priority. Yeah, I think that's good. Awesome. So Killjoy's playing real fast. Um, playing on a laptop keyboard, laptop screen definitely makes me a little sad. But swarm forces under attack. It is what it is. Okay, it feels like these queens are maybe a tad late. Not sure. Newly birthed queen. Oh, not guarding the creep tumor. Very lazy. Very lazy. I was about to tell him to get a drone to the third. He's sending it a bit late. That's okay. He saw the Reaper go there, so he's going to take that one. Good adjusting under pressure. So, yep. Good, good job getting that third queen started. Now, you don't start any extra queens for a while because you need to spend all your money on droning, right? So it's third queen basically as quickly as possible after your hatchery. Let's okay. squeeze another overlord in as well. Um, and just, but then it's just drone, drone, drone. So when do you start nonstop queen production? It's once you hit full uh, saturation on both bases. So we should also, with this first inject, grab two of those drones, put them on gas. It's always those drones kind of popping out around now and just before now that attack. go back on the gas in your main base newly birthed queen beautiful and you can now start non-stop queen production while droning that third we should already be all rallied to our third overlords drones we should be shuffling our overlords forward and these we've got queens on the way so these two queens should have joined the front as well so they should both be joining w and we should have three queens on W now. Oh, God. You're doing great. Queen birth successful. So remember, you got a lot of production. Don't build one overlord at a time. You should always be putting three or four at a time. Keep the queen production up. All right, you're doing really good. So you've reset your rally. It's time to do the gas transition after your next macro cycle. So it's injects, drones, and then we're gonna do all the gases then all the tech, and then we're gonna go for the extra hatcheries. So time Swarm to get going with that. Under Sorry, say that again. I time was to fixing take... my hacky. Oh, no worries. Time to take those gases because you've already reset your rally points. You've saturated your third. So we wanna go through drone, gas, 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 gas. And then it's your evos, your bane nest, and your lair Swarm all at once. So just A move your queens to the hellions and focus on the macro. Evos, bane nest, lair, all in one go. We got the bane nest. And then macro cycle, it kind of happens in between these, right? Where it's like, okay, you know, try and do injects and drone up and that sort of stuff, right? Now, yeah, you're doing a good job. Keep drone and drone and drone and keep rallying to those gases. Awesome, this is looking great. And the next step is macro hatch fourth base. And because you've got so much money, take a fifth as well. I'm going to change that step for you. You're going to do all at once, okay? We're going to just do more 
And if we lose one of these bases, it doesn't matter. Forces under attack. Now you only need a few more drones for each base. Um, and then you're fully saturated on three base. What's your rule? Once we have three workers, three bases of workers, 66 drones, you do nothing but build army. You're not allowed to ever go past this worker count, okay? Okay. Ever. So in your previous game, you 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 kind of were like, oh, I'm gonna make 85 drones off 10 zerglings. Never ever again. <laughs> For now, we are just injecting, spreading creep, making Ling Bane, um, get your spire down, and all you're doing now is trying to get Ling Spotters out, trying to mass Ling Bane, trying to inject, trying to spread creep, and obviously you know make sure all your hatcheries are on your control groups, which I think they are. We might be missing our macro hatch. And just keep massing lings, massing banes. And if this attack comes, that's okay. Just be willing to give up a base. Don't fight him. Just pull back. Take another hatchery in the top and just keep making lings and banes. And we're not going to fight until bane speed is ready in 45 seconds, okay? So your job here is to just keep producing, keep expanding, keep spreading creep. And if your opponent's pushing one area, spread creep elsewhere. And this rule, do because you've been so greedy early on, just some lings and queens... This rule of then do nothing but build units off 66 drones, this is going to keep you safe. This is going to make you such a better player. Um, because you're just going to have an abundance of army. And, and that's going to be fantastic. And that's going to allow you, when your opponent pushes you in the mid game, to A, move their army, and then have absolute map dominance. And the rule is you're only allowed to drone past that if you crush a fight. So, if you ever feel like you're a bit too incompetent, uh, or impotent, sorry, at one point, where you're just like, oh, I'm sitting back. <laughs> incompetent. Um, basically, just grab a bunch of Ling Bane, put them on that number five, that run by a squad, and you should have those off hiding somewhere on the edge of the map, ready to run into your opponent's natural or third. This is something you should always set up, right? Because you, as a Zerg, are a lion waiting in the grass, right? You are the apex fucking predator, except let's be real, your opponents are elephants and shit. If you just jump on it head on, it's going to gore the shit out of you. It's going to tusk you. You're going to get ruined. Um, so you're always waiting for them to step into the bad position. This is, this is kind of what we are doing as a Zerg player who's just continuing to keep up our production here, you know, build, building lings, building banes. And that run by you, you sent, by the way, that, that is the saddest little run by I've ever seen. And that's so <laughs> small. That is so small. Like, that should be like 15 Banes and 50 Zerglings. It's like 20 oh, Zerglings. Okay. So, obviously, it depends on the situation and what you prefer. And it kind of matters. But I'm just trying to exaggerate and, and kind of amplify the point that you can build way more than you think because you've got good map control. And this way, your army can split up at home and defend, and your run by always can be ready to roll in. But uh, just keep massing units here, and um, yeah, you can get your infestation and go hive if you want. But but it, it gives you a real solid basis. So I'll just let you let you play as you see fit. But in general, as your army gets big, you should always have your army split into two different groups, whether that's one and five, and that way you can sandwich them or whatever. So you're looking good. Make some more banes. Finish maxing out on zerglings as well. Keep it up. Ooh, I don't like this, guys. So I've muted myself so he can't hear me. Don't like okay, pull back at least. That's good. Mutation complete. Ooh, John Bomb's 2-2. Two, two. We'll kick in in a moment. It's a good push. John Bomb could rally to the front. That would be amazing for him, I think. Okay, lots of Ling Bane coming in. But that flank was severely mistimed. We had a lot of Zerglings that weren't here. They all come in behind the fight. Now those Marines will run in and kill that hatch. That's fine. And his mute is... Oh, that's a very dangerous click across the map. Oh my. Swarm forces They're going to all die, attack. aren't they? Swarm forces under attack. Drones under attack. Overall, though, he's doing really well. I think we can mention Obi spotters to mirror Hellion movement with the defense queens. Yeah, it looked a little bit better on the previous maps, but this one was really bad. It should be there should be an Overlord here, here, and like up here or something, or probably out there, right? To see those Hellions because the, the vision was pretty terrible in this game. But because there's so much bandwidth going on, 
with like relearning control groups. I'm not even going to mention it for now because it's like there's too much base mechanical stuff. So I don't think Killjoy has the bandwidth for it. I think I think kind of just needs a, like a little, depleted. you know, just a just needs a like a little bit of time to just get used to. Oh, my defense queens are on a different key. Oh, I've gone hatch first. This is a totally different flow. Oh, I'm actually trying to be organized in how I'm adding my structures and my gases and my hatcheries, which previously was like pretty haphazard. And you, I could tell was on, it was practiced, but it was practiced on a subconscious level. And I, I don't like anything that's subconscious in StarCraft because subconscious means you're not aware of what you're doing. And when you're playing a strategy game without being aware of what your strategy is, there is inherently a problem there, which I don't think even needs to be spelled out any further than that. But, you know, if you are doing a strategy and you don't consciously understand the strategy or have a, a set organization behind it, then it, it, it leads to a lot of problems. Goes forward, gets some tanks. So why are we sitting back so much with the Ling Bane is a big problem, right? So letting, letting the Terran push like this is just a huge mistake. It's like, why aren't the Lings cutting in behind? Why are we bleeding into this? It's like really bad. This is just letting John Bomb dictate where that fight happens and rally across the map into his dream position. This is not how you beat his beat Terran. This is why I was saying half your army should be waiting here. So Killjoy did the classic thing of like, let him come over and pick where and when and how the fights happen. Whereas if half the army was hanging over here, half the army down here, whenever the push comes, you're like, oh, you're pushing forward, bam. Half army here, half army here. Army Terran army's not even sieged yet. Easiest win of your life. You let the Terran spread siege, set everything up, and then you engage from one direction. You're giving the Terran what they want. So, kind of classic mistakes with the army movement. And focusing on the muters when the muters were not the most important thing. Because the muters were out kind of late. So they weren't the most important thing in this game. Killjoy actually still has a very good drone count, which is kind of impressive. Um... Now, is Killjoy has still got Queens alive? Under direct assault. All right, you're playing really well, but let's remember, let's not focus too hard on winning. Let's focus on trying to add some Queens back onto our Creep hotkey and respreading that Creep, which is the most important part of becoming a player who can bounce back in late game CBT. So what I often do for that is I'll just grab some injecting Queens, throw them on a key, and then, you know, build new Queens to replace them. Under attack. Definitely get out there with our Ling Bane. Good job. Ooh, should have been doing a bit more of an A move there, I think. But looks like just a bit too much Terran, so he's overwhelmed us. Good game though, good game. Alright, so open up the stream. You did really good that game. Um, like we said, you were meant to play like shit. You actually did really good. Um it's going to take a lot. I expected you to do a lot worse, basically. Okay. Obviously, I told him to back off a little, but I, I still expected right. you to fall apart a bit more because so many little baseline mechanical things. We are digging, like we just tore the floorboards up of your muscle memory because we're like, you're not doing a pool first. Now you're going hatch first. Your queens are on a different key. This is stuff where you should expect yourself to drop a few hundred MMR below where you are. You're like, shit, man, I've already dropped a few hundred MMR. Like, ah, that's good. Embrace it, lean into it. It's going to be freaking okay. awesome. Um... <laughs> no, that that was. I look forward to it. Um, we 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 tore up the floorboards. Uh, your overlord positioning sucked in the early game. Minor note, it totally makes sense. You weren't focused on that when you're getting used to the different build order and everything. Um, with the hatch first. So, uh, I, I I don't know if you want to write this down down or not. I'll write it down as well. Hatch first opening. Send mm -hmm. 20th drone to wait at third base. So you don't have to deal with this okay. disruption early. And then what you're going to do is we want to go something like 30, let's say 30 supply, third hatch. And then we go... Sorry, you said 30 supply, right? Yeah, yeah. let's say okay. 30, I don't know. Let's say 31. 31 third hatch. And then we can go 30 overlord plus queen or queen plus overlord. So the idea there is you start the hatch... You build your third queen from the natural, you build an overlord, and you've got a few lava sitting there at that point, because you go on hatchery, queen, overlord. Very expensive, right? That's 550 minerals. Bam, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. But that's just going to be a nice little set piece to make sure that third queen comes out not too late, and that'll be really good for you. Also means your hatch isn't blocked, so there's no disruption right there at the start. Y your drone loses 20 minerals that it could have mined. Who cares? It's better to just get the hatch down. Doesn't matter. Um, okay. So that there is, is nice. Beyond that, just make sure your overlords get in the right positions. 
especially because you send two overlords across the map a lot of the time. So you don't get a lot of vision around your bases uh, as quickly as other players do. But just make sure you've got those three overlords because we never had the overlord okay. on the left. So overlord should have been on the left uh, of your natural. And yeah. you also should have had one up to the right of where you took your third base in this game. I'm showing it on stream, by the mm -hmm. way, with a few seconds delay. I don't know. Um, but basically, yeah, I'm sure you, can, you can kind of visualize. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, it was it was good to see, mate. Just, um, yeah, just uh, beyond that, it's just like, you know, ramping up the production and stuff. And so like, you know, we can look at like little details, like little things, right? So there's, there's like other little notes. Like, okay, so what are some other little notes here? Like, um, you know, oh, uh, remember first inject drones, resaturate gas, right? Uh, like little, oh, little things like that. Oh, the first inject, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's, you know, normally what it would be, right? Um, so that, that normally pops out. First inject pops out at like yeah three ten, so oh, then okay. those and then the drones build they take like twelve fifteen seconds you build them here at like three fourteen three fifteen they pop out right around three thirty so they go straight on the gas so it's just like a nice little thing to remember. Likewise, okay. um, when do we start building queens once both bases are saturated? Right? When does that happen? So start okay. queens at two bases at two bases saturated. And that should be about 3 minutes 45, roughly. Could be as early as 3 minutes 40. And if you think about okay. it, if we look at... If, have you got the stream open, by the way? Yes. Yep. So there's a point here. An inject just popped on your natural. An inject's about to pop in your main at 3.40. And you see you've got all the minerals. So that's like, oh, that's the sweet spot where we can go, okay, I can start queuing up queens. But it's also on this next inject, we can go inject. And because we've got more queens building nonstop from here, they inject and add to the queen hotkey and it becomes one action right inject shift okay. w inject shift w <laughs> so that way out it becomes like oh okay and, and things start to cinch these are the details that will feel very natural once you've practiced a bunch of games on it right but they're the things that make the build a lot easier whereas like you know when you're starting in this game you're like oh okay inject the hatchery oh shit i need queens to defend these hellions um okay yeah. i need to go grab those right so you're, you're like having to double and triple up on actions just because you're not used to the build that's all going to become more natural so we've kind of got a few of those little pointers for you to just kind of keep it going um start queens okay. at two base saturated 345 um queens popping immediately add into defense key and come to the front to defend hellions awesome so what's the other thing that you need to check in every single game which will cinch together and link up all of your learning? When are you saturating your third base fully on minerals? And I said, we need to hit that yes. no later than five minutes. And you need to benchmark and check that every game, okay? Because if you take this on the ladder, you're going to be hitting this pretty late because those Hellions and Reapers are going to be more in your face. You're going to get distracted. You're going to make mistakes right now. So keep that as a focus point. That's going to keep your focus on what you need to be focused on, right? So it's like, yeah, we've got all these details to think about. At the core of it, though, we should see this getting more and more consistent. Third base, always fully saturated on minerals, no later than five minutes. And we want to aim for 430 with that, okay? Okay. Now, will we actually get 430? No, if we're not hitting it, that's fine. But it's just it's just a good thing to keep an eye on, okay? So that's going to be really nice. Um, I think Sweet. that, and, and I've written that all as this summary up the top of your notes. So we've got kind of all the most important information up the top of the, the document. Everything below that's a little bit kind of mechanics check, this thing, opening build, it's all, all haphazard. <laughs> but at the very top, we've got kind of like the homework list, the takeaways, the most important stuff for you to have got out of today. Awesome. So that, all right, that's, sweet. That's what we want to review tomorrow, the day after, the day after as we practice and just keep kind of going, okay, yeah, let's make sure we're doing all this. Um, awesome. Awesome awesome uh yeah very well played um we did let him push into us a bit hard obviously a bit of an unfamiliar situation with your style it's more important for you to set up those big ling bane counter attacks or sandwiches depending on how you want to do it you can have like half your ling bane on the top half your ling bane on the bottom ready for more of a sandwich or half your ling bane ready to just literally smash their production and economy and half your ling bane at home but anytime okay. you end up sitting in more of a blob and letting them siege up spread and set up you're setting up for a losing situation. So with this being a mega macro style, whenever we're doing that situation, we want to kind of be just throwing them back the moment they get in your creep. We want to be trying to jump on Terran players a bit more. We don't want to ever be letting them just siege up and um, fight where <laughs> yeah, they want to. Sense. 
it's it's either we're backstabbing them and pulling back on the front and going, okay, you want to dive on creep into speed beans? Do that. I'm not going to attack off the edge of creep into your spread, you know. T ZVT is a lot of trying to get the other player to take the stupid fights into you. So let's try and um, be assertive <laughs> with that. And if you okay. are ever just sitting defensively with a big army for a while, you feel like you're doing nothing. Hey, let's get 60 of those Zerglings ready down the bottom of the map or the top of the map morph 20 of them into banelings wait for him to move out and then that's their trigger to run into their natural and win the game basically okay that makes sense sweet beautiful play overall um lots of speed <laughs> coming out from you good mechanics really good first attempt there so big thanks to um big thanks Buria and john bomb um if you're free to maybe you add these guys to friends or, or give them a message see if they're free later i know you've got your dinner to eat and stuff but um, <laughs> yeah Jesus, it's going to be cold as. But uh, yeah, uh, our, our future sessions can be a bit more straight into meat and potatoes of different matchups. So hopefully okay. um, hopefully that works out, mate. Awesome. Thank you so much. No worries. Uh, we went 15 minutes over, so no worries. I'll just note that down here. And that's cool. Okay. We can be a bit more efficient in the future sessions and keep it just to one hour. But uh, awesome. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, mate. Have a good night. I'll catch you later. Have a good later. Peace. Cheers, man.